Hello everyone, Jayma Malmi here. Welcome to another scrapbook process video. I am creating a bright and cheery birthday layout of my daughter with her best friend right before we moved, so it was kind of bittersweet. And I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna use this It's the Little Things collection, which is these bright colored six by six papers. And I used those in my last layout video. They're super fun. And they have these like black, little paperboard pieces that go along with them. There's a balloon and a little happy birthday that goes on the cake that I thought would be fun. But the accent is black and that would match my daughter's friend's outfit. And my daughter is wearing navy blue and matches a lot of the colors in this flower shop collection, which I thought would be really fun. So ultimately I am gonna choose the flower shop collection and the cake has a different blue than flower shop, which I was kind of bummed about. I probably could have made it work, but it would have bugged me. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that cake for another project. So I already put a border around my layout and I'm going to just adhere it down to my Versamat because we are going to need to do a lot of lining up of all of these little paper squares I'm going to put down. So there were lots of little patterns that I wanted to use and they all work together so well. Um, I got this layout idea from Pinterest and I will link that down below. Um, there was a really cute layout with just one photo, but I'm going to be using three photos. So I arranged them so that all of the colors and patterns were kind of spread out evenly and, um, you know, sort of created a visual triangle or just spaced out nicely. And I'm going to use my ruler to sort of pre-determine, pre-place things, decide how much space I want around the border. I didn't know if I wanted like three quarters of an inch or an inch. So I'm just kind of like spacing things out for now before I bring in my photos and decide how I want those to go. So on my T-square ruler, I think it's about an inch wide and I had the edge of it going to the edge of the white daisy paper and then spacing everything out and seeing if that will work to have the same margin around all four sides. And then I'm gonna decide what matte color I want around my photos. I did already matte them in white, but I like to have a second matte most of the time. And so I'm trying out a few colors and I'm ultimately gonna decide with the sapphire to go with the border that's around the entire layout. And I'm thinking that I want them to be kind of like this because I'm gonna put some fun embellishments and the title in the little nooks and crannies that are formed above those three by four photos. So just kind of deciding where I want them. And then I know that I need to glue all of those squares down because they keep moving around on me and it's gonna be hard to lay out all of my embellishments and all that um, until I lay those down. So I'm pretty happy with this photo placement and I'm just gonna move all of the squares out of the way that are gonna be completely hidden by the photos. And as I'm doing that and as I put the photos down, I'm realizing that a lot of the colors are being covered up and so like this yellow one doesn't really have much yellow anywhere else on the page to kind of balance it out. So I'm gonna move the yellow one down here and just move things around so that things are a little more balanced now that the photos are in their place. So glad I didn't glue the uh, squares down first because this definitely had to be done to create balance to the page. I'm just going to add a little sapphire square down here to help balance out that one on the top. And I think that this is pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and start adhering everything down. I'm going to get my photos out of the way and bring my T-square back in. And now you can see why it was important to glue down that paper to um, my Versamat. And this Versamat is really gonna help line things up because there's measurements on the side. So I find it helpful to get one row done and one column done, and then everything else can kind of fall into place. So like I said, I've got my T-square ruler lined up on the edge of the white paper, and I'm going to, dis I was measuring, I forget where it was at, like a little less than an inch down or about an inch down from the top and the sides and get that first one in place. And then I will come over, make sure I've got the right margins on the right side. And then I will glue down the square that is in the, in the opposite corner of that row. And then I'll come back to the two that are in between and make sure that they are evenly spaced and lined up at the top. 
Um, so I've got that first row done and then I will go back to the first column and do exactly the same thing. So I'm not going to show you gluing all of these down, but just wanted to kind of show you because I know that this can be pretty tricky. This is a really great layout idea if you've got a lot of different colors and patterns that you wanted to use. So like I really wanted to use that floral pattern that has the navy blue background, but there's no yellow in it and I really wanted to use yellow. So bringing in that floral with the yellow and pink helps to bring in all of the other colors that I wanted to use. So those are the two colors that are, uh, you know, florals with lots of colors. And then the other ones are more single color um, squares. So I really like how they all worked together. This is the, I think it's called Celebrate Today collection that this Happy is from. I had the whole sticker sheet left even though I didn't have much of the paper. So I thought that that Happy looked cute up there in the corner. And then this birthday I cut on my Cricut. It is a font called Autumn in November. It is one of my favorite fonts for script cutting on my Cricut. And I will link that down below. It's from defont.com, it's totally free. And um, then I did the outline around it and just cut that on my Cricut as well as these balloons. They were just um, either free files or balloons that I had purchased in previous collections and they had these cute little strings. So I cut those in a very light gray. I think it's mink and we'll have some of those hanging over the photo or one of them hanging over the photo and the other ones are kind of tucked behind the photo. So getting those all in place and then I get to do my favorite part, the embellishing. There's an embellishment pack that goes with Flower Shop and there it is right there. There are some paperboard pieces and some acrylic pieces in white and pink. I really like this kind of open flower. It's the same flower that's in that navy and white patterned paper. And I thought that looked cute layered behind the birthday. And then I also grabbed some stickers from that same Celebrate Today sticker sheet that that happy came from. And so I liked that pink banner that's kind of, I think it says life's a party, that's at the bottom. And then these leaves are from a couple of different die sets. The layered flowers and then the sprigs and stems I think is the other one. And I thought even though I don't have any flower embellishments, like I didn't die cut any out to go with them, there's flowers in that paper and I really liked the wispiness that they brought in and kind of, you know, tucked behind the balloons even though the balloons aren't flowers. I just thought it looked cute poking out from behind a few places so I created a visual triangle with those. And then these hearts and stars that I'm putting on kind of sprinkling as small embellishments are from that it's the little things that little six by six paper collection that I showed you earlier and then I saw that extra balloon that I had cut that I wasn't using and I thought that would look really cute right behind this little circle acrylic embellishment here so I just trimmed that off and I'll glue that behind there and get that in place and then this is the Celebrating You collection, which is currently available. And it has some of that sapphire, navy blue, and some of the honey butter yellow on it. And so I just pulled a few of the pieces because it has silver foiling. So I pulled a few of the pieces that matched that had the silver foiling just to bring a little bit of sparkle to this. I really didn't add a lot of sparkle to this layout, which is not usual for me. I like to add a lot of bling, um, but I didn't add much on this, although there is a lot going on on this one page layout. So I just tucked a few little pieces behind there. I really like that subtle shine that the foiling adds just in these small pieces. So I'm scattering them around like I would like a little sparkle or gem on the page and sort of creating a visual triangle with those navy blue pieces. I'm going to end up adding another one up here on the balloon. If you've enjoyed this video so far and are inspired, I would love it if you gave it a thumbs up so YouTube knows that you enjoy it and that really helps my channel. So thanks so much for that. I'm going to add um, a little bit of inking around this banner because it is such a light pink. I wanted it to pop just a little bit more. So I'm adding flamingo around and um, I, it was hard to get in the little nooks and crannies. So I had this little sponge dauber that helped. So I'm going to do a few of those here. I really liked the look of it just 
going direct to the ink pad because it added just a real subtle amount but I had to use the sponge to get in those little nooks so it was a little bit harder and you can see on that second P I got a little bit too much it kind of smudged but I'm gonna go ahead and fix that with a sequin so I did end up adding a little bit more shine here with some sequins and I'm just using my little pickup tools like got a wax end and helps me pick up those little sequins add a little dot of glue and stick it down and no one would ever know that I made that little goof on that banner so here are some close-ups and I'll have still shots on Instagram. All of my social media channels are linked down below for you. If you love this flower shop collection as much as I do, I will have it linked below as well as all the other supplies that I used. And just a heads up, things have been selling out quickly. So if you love it, I suggest grabbing it real soon. For another idea using the same collection, check out the video on screen now. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.